The eyes of the world were on us here in Scotland. As the 26th United Nations Climate Change Conference, COP26, took place in Glasgow recently. There is no doubt everyone has a part to play in response to the climate emergency. And in this debate today, I hope to be able to highlight some of the commitments in the Glasgow Food and Climate Declaration. I would like to introduce uh, Fausal Chowdhury, MSP, uh, the first Bangladeshi to be elected as a member to the Scottish Parliament. It is a great pleasure and honour for me to welcome you all to this evening's reception in honour of the Honourable Prime Minister of the People's Republic of Bangladesh, Her Excellency Sheikh Hasina. Prime Minister, I would like to warmly welcome you to Scotland. On behalf of all my colleagues here in Scottish Parliament and the Scottish Bangladeshi community. This motion acknowledges the growing number of people who believe that the teaching of history should include an honest representation of the more shameful aspects of Scotland's past, such as its involvement in the transatlantic slave trade. I should start by emphasizing why it is impor so important to include this in the teaching of Scottish history. It is not an attempt to talk the country down. It has two clear constructive purposes. Firstly, to allow students to understand the horror of the past with a view to ensuring that they are never to be repeated. And secondly, to ensure that students develop a realistic appraisal of how far we have come as a nation and as a society, and how far we still have to go. Now, parents living in a housing development in Whitburn fear their children could be hit by a car on the way to school because they say there's no way of safely crossing the road. I feel for the family here. I feel for the people who is crossing the road. I know the difficulty they're going through. The little kids are trying to cross the road when the, the cars are flying away. As far as I'm concerned, that if the promise was made and uh, they should be fulfilling that and they should come out and do it as soon as possible. Many constituents have expressed to me that due to the total lack of NHS provision in their areas, they're left with untreated dental pain and conditions. Does the First Minister realise that she is increasingly not even overseeing a two-tier system? For many people across Scotland, dentistry is effectively privatised already. First Minister, there are significant challenges uh, because of the pandemic. That is why uh, we financially supported uh, dentists during the pandemic and why we're taking action now uh, to further support dentists. Many nations in Africa are still way behind in vaccination with some only having vaccinated 5% of their population. Can I ask the Scottish Government how much of Scotland vaccine supply has already been delivered to Malawi and what are the future plans to bolster supplies? I think it's hugely important that Scotland's voice is heard in this and equally the voice of our partner countries is reflected in the allocation of vaccine to poorer countries. The city of Edinburgh was particularly hit hard when restrictions were imposed with no notice to the cultural sector, including our treasured theatres. Can the Cabinet Secretary assure the Chamber and indeed the cultural sector that if restrictions were to be imposed, adequate notice is given to prepare the sector and financial resources ready to be dispersed to the cultural venues? Okay, to all colleagues in Edinburgh and throughout the rest of the country, please let's do everything that we can to give as much confidence to people returning and supporting the, uh, the cultural sector in our venues, uh, and that will give them the greatest chance of success. Now, residents living in South Queensferry gathered to protest today over plans for Transport Scotland to block use of an access road to a new housing development. Today, residents pleaded with their local MSP to raise the access issue in Parliament. The voice from here is that uh, accident will happen, the traffic is going to be doubling up. Transport Scotland need to answer. We celebrate the contribution of people from Bangladesh in Scotland. I would like to raise with the First Minister the case of my constituent Anne Sinclair, 
who last October, after waiting seven months for diagnostic procedure, was told that she has an aggressive form of endowment cancer for which she is still awaiting treatment. The First Minister will be aware of the importance of early diagnosis in the successful treatment of cancer. What assurance can she give my other constituents waiting for cancer diagnosis that they will not be left in the similar positions? First Minister. Yes, I absolutely agree uh, that from what the member has said, uh, Mrs Sinclair's uh, situation uh, does not sound uh, at all acceptable. We have sought to prioritise cancer care right throughout the pandemic, recognising the importance of early diagnosis and early access to treatment. We have a responsibility to make sure that is the experience of every uh, patient suffering uh, a cancer diagnosis. I want to congratulate Faisal Chaudhry MSP, the first uh, MSP of Bangladeshi Heritage, who has really been a very dynamic person who's trying to be the ambassador of Bangladesh here in the Scottish Parliament. I welcome this opportunity to speak in this chamber on International Women's Day. Women in Sco Scotland today must have confidence that this parliament listens, learns and acts on their concern and priorities. Not only on International Women's Day, but every day.